We're going to read from Luke 5, verse 12 through to 14. So this is Jesus it's talking about. While he, Jesus, was in one of the cities, behold, there was a man covered. That means that covered is completely full of leprosy. And when he saw, I mean the the leprous man, saw Jesus, and he discerned clearly who Jesus was when he actually saw him and maybe saw Jesus work miracles, recognised the power and authority on his life because that saw means to discern clearly. When the leprous man discerned clearly who Jesus was, when he really understood who Jesus was, he came and he fell on his face and he implored Jesus, saying, Lord, if you are willing... If you choose to, if you're inclined to, if you wish to, you can. Or you're able to. You're, it's possible for you to make me clean, to purify me, to purge me, to get rid of the unwanted quality, the condition or feeling that I have. And Jesus stretched out his hand. Figuratively, that's his power. He stretched out his power and touched. That word touch means to fasten to and to set on fire. Wow, I was really amazed when I saw that. When you think about Jesus and the power and the authority and the light and the fire that's within him, he set the man on fire as such. And it's saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him and he ordered him to tell no one, but go and show yourselves to the priest and to make an offering for your cleansing. That cleansing means the washing off, the atonement, the purification, just as Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Here is a man who is full of leprosy, and it's obvious. Leprosy is a skin disease. It uh, is actually a a nerve-ending disease as well. It's a bacteria that travels in the body, and it starts off on the ends of us and the extremities of our body and uh, kills off the nerve endings and the flesh. It's very painful and of course uh, their hands will start to rot. I actually have a picture um, up of of a lady with leprosy, although she is smiling in this picture. uh, It would be a very painful thing to be slowly having your nerve endings die, your fingers rotting away and it continues throughout the body until the person is dead. It is a contagious disease. It's like COVID. It's given through um, coughing and sneezing and like a common cold, it's, it's quite transferable. And so anybody that had leprosy um, was isolated. They were moved out of the community. They were considered unclean um, because they had rotting flesh um, and because it was transferable and contagious. Um, and so they became social outcasts. They would make colonies um, on islands and uh, outside cities where they were not allowed to uh, work, they were not allowed to be with their families, uh, they were not allowed to go to the temple um, and to uh, praise God in any way or give him worship in any way. Um, they were social outcasts. So this leprosy... It, even though it is a skin condition, you know, and it's obvious that there's something wrong with the person, um, it's actually not just that that gets affected. So think about this for a minute. Your life's normal. You've got a lovely, healthy family and everybody's, you know, doing life together, working, etc. And then suddenly you break out with leprosy and you're ripped from your loved ones, you're isolated. If you go near anyone, they are so scared that they're going to catch it from you. Sound a bit like today, doesn't it? Um, That they stone you and yell at you and, and call out leper and point at that person to make sure everybody keeps away from them. Um, they were no longer touched. And touch is something that all of us long for. It's a known fact if you don't touch a baby when it's first born, it only takes a few days and that baby will die from lack of touch. That's how important touch is for us. 
Uh, I remember a lady who was going through divorce in our church and one day I gave her a hug and she just melted into my arms and said, you have no idea how much that touch meant to me. Just having somebody touch and hold them. And you know that, we all need that. And these people can no longer be touched, can no longer have that connection with society, with family, with friends. The value in life is diminished to nearly nothing and there's pain. I don't know if you've ever had nerve pain like a tooth or you know, sciatic pain or something. It's horrible. It's persistent and, it, and it's nasty and sharp and never gives up. These guys are in this constant pain and... Um, and even though the Bible in Leviticus 13 and 14 goes through telling us all about leprosy and how to identify it and what to do with it and, um, and also put in place that if somebody happened to get healed, um, you know, that they could go to the temple. When they did get healed, they had to go to the temple and do a uh, sin sacrifice, a guilt sacrifice, um, as well as burnt and, and grain offerings that they had to do. Um, to cleanse themselves and to make up from it. So I don't know if you can put yourself in their shoes. I can. Um, you know, I just think it would be horrendous. And, you know, maybe we've never experienced a contagious disease like leprosy, uh, you know, other than maybe the closest thing is COVID at the moment, that if somebody said they had COVID, we'd all like push out of the room. Um, but, um, you know, so maybe we can identify a little bit more with it. But it's not something that's just physical, it's social, it's emotional, it's spiritual, and it's death itself. And it's not just a, um, an outward disease, a physical disease that's being mentioned here in this story. It is a whole person being diseased, a whole person's life being affected and this man uh, was covered completely full of leprosy. Um, it would have been on his toes, his fingers, his face um, and they may have tried to hide it but as soon as they tried to hide it under something everybody recognised the hiding, the, the hiding was also a signal that there was a problem and um, you know this, this poor man, it was, um, his life was destroyed. And we can think, ah, oh, well, that's, you know, that's just a disease and it's nothing. But there's actually, uh, it's a symbol of something. You know, um, a symbol of our flesh, of our human fleshly nature. It's diseased. Since Adam and Eve, we've been diseased as a human race. And uh, we, you might say, no, it's not possible, but we're going to take a moment just to look at a couple of pictures, see if you can see leprosy on people's lives, death, socially, physically. You click through. Keep, just keep clicking for me. That's the effect of drugs, alcohol. You say, share it, it's contagious. Hey. <laughs> All these things are contagious. People, depression, anger, self-worth. Yeah, thank you. They're all things that are leprosy. They're a form of spiritual symbolism of leprosy. They're things that are in our flesh, in our flesh, fleshly behaviour and nature, in our DNA that is contagious. You know, we know that, especially peer pressure, um, that's contagious, the behaviours. Um, we know that perpetrators are often being victims beforehand because it's contagious, it passes on. Sin is a form of leprosy and it eats away our flesh and it slowly kills us. And it starts off on just small things on the extremities of our life as such. And we think, oh, it's just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But eventually it takes hold of our life and it slowly eats away at us. And you think about the state of the world today, you will see leprosy everywhere. You will see the decay of sin, the decay of human flesh everywhere. And you will see its destruction. And it's quite noticeable. You know, like we can look at some of these bigger issues like drugs and stuff like that and go, well, it's not me. 
But, you know, what about self-worth? You know, people's self-worth has been attacked um, through media and through images on TV and stuff like that. And even nowadays with all the, the Facebook postings, you know, my life's not as good as Mary's, you know, that sort of stuff that goes on. So our world is being destroyed and eaten away with the sin of leprosy. And it's destroying our lives. And it is a, a condition of the heart, leprosy or sin, Sin is actually a condition of the heart, but it displays in our flesh, just like leprosy is a bacteria that can't be seen, um, but it displays in our um, flesh. Sin is a condition of the heart that's hidden. Nobody can see your heart except God, but its display in manifestation is in our flesh. And um, there's a story in the Bible that gives a really simple illustration of this. And if I'd thought of how I could do this, I would have done it as a physical <laughs> showing us but there's a story of um, uh, Moses at the burning bush we don't often think about the rest of the story there but the burning bush I'm sure you're very familiar with as how he's out looking after the uh, herd and he sees this bush that would normally be consumed and a fire hits a bush it's normally consumed yeah well instead this bush just keeps burning and not being consumed so he goes over and looks at it a long story short, he has a conversation with God and God calls him um, and tells him he's got to go back into Egypt and rescue the people um, from Pharaoh. And he's like, well, who am I? Nobody's going to listen to me. <laughs> the Israelites aren't going to listen to me. Uh, you know, Pharaoh's not going to listen to me. I'm a nobody. You know, and maybe we feel like we're nobodies too. <laughs> but um, God basically gets him um, to do a couple of things uh, signs, if you like, that he's going to have to do to prove that he has been called of God. And uh, one of the things that God tells him to do, it's in Exodus 4, 6 and 7, is he says, Moses, stick your hand inside your bosom and your heart. So Moses does, he sticks it inside his coat, and when he pulls it out, his hand is leprous. And it's saying to him, your heart is unclean. Your heart is full of of horribleness, of death and decay. And then he says, Moses, stick your hand back in. And Moses sticks his hand back in and it comes back out clean. And he's saying, I can do this. I can change the condition of your heart. Nobody else can change it. Nobody has the power to be free of leprosy or of sin. Not one of us can do it. Each man's heart no matter how good or how much we hide it with our bandages of life, each man's heart is full of leprosy. But with God, he transforms our heart and he creates um, a pure heart, a cleansing of our lives. And I think we forget the weight that we had before we were Christians. We forget how lost we were. We forget that we were part of a, a decaying system in a world. And sometimes we look aloof once we've come into the kingdom of God and we look at judgment upon the world and its condition. We look at people that are drunk or you know, doing things that we know are full of sin and we look down our nose at them. But we've got to remember our hearts were all full of decay and leprosy, every single one of us. Um, but by the grace of God, he has cleansed our hearts. He has made our hearts righteous. He has made them holy. And the last time I spoke, I spoke on the armour of God and remembering that the breastplate that protects the heart is righteousness, understanding your righteousness, understanding the death and decay that was there and then the healing that took place of your heart the purifying of your heart, the cleansing of your heart, and now that you're right with God, that your heart is right with God, that you're acceptable, you're no longer unclean, you are clean, you are holy, you are pure. Remembering that, that is an armour to us. It's a protection from the enemy. It's a protection from this world. But we never to sit back and take it for granted we're never to sit back and look down our nose at the lost, but instead to remember that we were lost 
and now we're saved. And they can be saved as well. The lost can be transformed as well. And to go with hope in our lives, to know that God is upon my heart, that my heart is righteous. I'm in a right standing with God, not on what I've done, but because of who he is, the power of transformation of him and what he can do in my life. And I think it's powerful and it's a, a wonder that we need to remember. It's um, Mark 7, 20 to 23, Jesus is saying here that everything that proceeds out of a man, that's what defiles a man. From within, out of the heart of a man, possesses the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride and foolishness. All these evil things, they proceed from within and defile the man. We know that. We know that mankind is defiled. You just look at the world we can see the ravages of leprosy and the contagiousness of it as it goes from generation to generation and even sometimes seems to be getting worse each generation, more infectious. We can see that. And it can seem hopeless. It can seem overwhelming. It can produce fear in our lives. Um, it can feel self-hatred, uh, you know, the amount of times I've spoken to people that are struggling with areas in their life, areas of leprosy, and they feel unworthy. They, you know, you think about the, the leper. He said to Jesus, if you are willing. Now, but before that, going back to the beginning of the verse there, he said, and when he saw, when he fully discerned, discerned who Jesus was, he came and fell at his feet. So he knew Jesus had the power. He knew Jesus' character was that, that he would go and heal people. What he was really asking was, are you willing to do it for me? If you're willing, am I good enough? Will you love me enough to cleanse me? Tell me a person who hasn't felt that. Every single one of us has felt that. Am I good enough for God? Will he do it for me? Will he cleanse me? Will he help me? Will he save me? Look at the heartache I'm going through. Look at these issues. I'm overwhelmed. I'm lost and I'm in agony and pain. And what was Jesus' response? I am willing. I am willing. Of the years that I used to pray for situations in my life with the enemy tormenting my mind that if I was only good enough, if I'd done enough for God, if I had enough faith. You know, the scripture says um, that example of prayer that Jesus did, your kingdom come, your will be done. The enemy used to use that as a weapon against me, saying, if it's his will, He'll touch you. His will will come into your situation if it's his will. And while I knew God had the power, while I knew and had faith that he had the authority and I'd seen miracles and I, I believed the stories of the Bible, I believed um, in who he was, where my doubt was, was where it's me. Are you sure that he'd do it for me? Are you sure I'm good enough? I would look and see my filthy rags, my self-righteousness. I would look and see my failings. I would look and see my human nature. And well, no human nature is good enough. But by the grace of God, through the work of Jesus on the cross, I am cleansed. I am whole, not by my work, not by my doing, but by his doing, because he is willing. Jesus is willing. Father God is willing. No matter what situation, no matter how much decay, death, 
pain, stench, social isolation, uh, isolation, no matter what manifestation. Nothing can stop him. Nothing is more powerful than his love. Patience was the word. Love is patient. He bore everything on the cross for us because he was willing. And we need to take that doubt out of our mind because it's a huge hook that the enemy uses. He uses that all the time to threaten you. You're not good enough. You haven't been to church lately. You haven't been praying enough. You haven't tithed enough. You're not serving enough. Listen to that. Janine spoke about serving. Oh, you know that's about you. You're not good enough. The Bible says... It's your own heart that's condemning you. That sinful leprosy that's condemning you. We see it and we look at it and we feel horror at what we see and it condemns you. But he doesn't condemn you. John 3, 17, I think it is, says he didn't come to condemn the world but to save the world. We look at the world and say, condemn it for the leprosy, but he came to save it of its leprosy. And he called us to carry the power and the authority of him into this world, to deliver it from its leprosy. We must remember from whence we've come and the love that he's given us. Again, look at this story. We know Jesus' words are powerful, yeah? Yeah. He spoke to storms and they stopped. Um, the word was with God and Jesus was that word. And that word created the world and everything. And it's by his world word, it's all sustained and remains in action. So hang on a minute. Jesus didn't have to do anything other than say, I'm willing, be healed. And the man could have been healed, could have been cleansed. But it says before he spoke, in verse 13, when the man said, if you're willing, he said, it says, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched, fastened hold of him and set him on fire and then said, I am willing. Be cleansed. Be cleansed. It wasn't healed. It's cleansed, made clean. All the sin washed away. Cleansed. He touched him. Why? Why did he have to touch him? Why not just speak? He had the power to speak. But remember what this disease did. Okay? Nobody was to touch them. All right? It was contagious. It was something that made them a social outcast. By touch, he was embracing him. He was loving him. He was accepting him. He was giving value to him. I know that when there's been times where I've been overseas on missions trips and even some situations here in Australia where I've had to deal with people that are filthy <laughs> and they stink or it's obvious they've like, uh, there's one poor guy, he was weeping pus from his ears and... I determined inside myself to touch him. Why? Because I was trying to say, I accept you. I give value to you. Not just my words, but my actions. I wanted to demonstrate acceptance. And so Jesus was demonstrating acceptance to a man who'd been outcast, to a man who had been ostracised and... <laughs> nobody liked him, nobody wanted him. He was risking his own life by even coming into the midst of the crowd. And Jesus touched him. But there's also another thing. It's contagious. So by Jesus touching him in his human natural form, because he wasn't in his God form, he should have actually caught leprosy. But instead, it's greater as he that's within Jesus. And he's more contagious. The transference wasn't from leprosy to Jesus, with Jesus getting it and it have overpowering his body, but instead he carried the presence of God within his natural body. And that presence of God overpowered the disease within that man. 
we must remember that as well. Because it's not, come Holy Spirit, I need thee, and as if he's out there. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives, he remains, he dwells within us. And so we have to have that revelation. Like Peter, silver and gold have I none, he said to the leper, who, uh, not to the, the lame man that was wanting some arms, some begging from him. He said, I've got no money, mate. <laughs> but what I do have, he knew he had it, I give you, rise up, walk. And he raised the man. He didn't have to call down heaven he knew the heaven was within him, that he lived with God and he's been transformed into a new creation. Again, we get these deceptions that once I'm saved, I've got to work it all out to get there and finally be good enough for God. That's actually a deception. Scripture actually tells us that, behold, all things have passed away, all your past, all your wrongs. Behold, all all things are new. Other verses tell you you're a new creation. You're being transformed, renewed, like the heart with Moses came back out. His heart was clean and pure. It wasn't a process. Didn't have to keep doing it. It actually happened instantaneously. But it's just us renewing our mind to believe the truth. Rather than setting our mind on the things of the natural and the world, instead setting our mind on the truth and who he is. It is his will to heal. It is his will to make you whole. It is his power, the power of the gospel to transform somebody who was a drug addict and transform them to be a normal person, to restore the ravages of this disease back. You know, there's a, um, I don't know if you've heard of Azusa Street, but there was a, a move of God in Azusa Street that's not just set for one period of time or, you know, one little suburb or group of people that God favoured. He doesn't favour any man. It was that the people positioned themselves to actually receive the truth. They received the truth. And in Azusa Street, whole limbs would grow and they would have children praying for one another and people would get out of wheelchairs. People that actually had, they had a whole wall of you know, fake legs and arms and all types of body bits and, and um, um, crutches and all types of things of people actually having their Limbs grow back. You can get on Google and, and you can even hear the testimonies because they're older people that were children that were present and seeing somebody's arm grow, <laughs> just continue to grow back into normality. And they weren't having God himself appear. They were people and children praying, but they were receiving the truth in their mind. And we need to understand that God is willing and he can heal the worst of sinners. He healed you and forgave you. And he will continue to do that if you put your faith in him. As Christians, we must remember who he is and what he has done. And do not, as Paul says, fall again into bondage, fall again into slavery by putting it in works and in law and in judgment towards one another, but instead remain in grace, remain dependent upon him. Grace is his divine influence in your life and then it's outworking and display. We can't change our heart. <laughs> he has to do it. And those of us that have come to a place of salvation, We've had that transformation take place, but too many of us have fallen back into looking for leprosy. And maybe it's come because we've judged others and it's opened up that door to ourselves. Maybe it's come because we've judged ourselves and looked at our flesh. But a mindset on the flesh, as Scripture says, results in death. But the mindset on the spirit, and if we put to death the things of the flesh by the spirit... It tells us clearly in Scripture how to do these things. And he says even, like, I love one of my favourite stories is when uh, Jesus washes the disciples' feet and, uh, and Peter doesn't want it done because, and, um, and you know, his pride's in the way. 
And, uh, and then Jesus says, you can't have a part of me. He's like, oh, well, wash all of me, my hands, my head, the whole, whole part of me, you know. And I know, no, Peter, you're already clean because of me. Because you walk with me, you're clean. You've just got some dust. Deal with the dust. Let's wash the dust off your feet. And that's what he says to you. If you've received Jesus as your Lord and your Saviour, then you have had your sins forgiven. Past, present, future. Your leprosy is gone. You're not, your heart is no longer leprous. Your heart is clean and pure. What you're looking at is either the dregs, like the enemy like, gets you to look back with um, accusation. And I tell you this, the more you look back, the more offence and the more it will seethe and rise up and fester again. Do not look back. The Bible says, not worthy of the kingdom if you look back. Like a dog returning to vomit. Don't look back. All right? Forget your past. It is gone. The enemy, the accuser, you pull him down with the word of your testimony. It's dealt with. Jesus did a cleansing. He cleansed me. Um, maybe you're struggling in an area now where you think, okay, well, hang on. You're telling me that I'm clean and holy and righteous, but look at this problem. Now remember the warfare, their heart, their breastplate, their protection from the enemy was to remind themselves that their heart was right with God. In uh, Hebrews 5, at the end of that chapter, it talks about mature Christians, the difference between an immature Christian and a mature Christian, and it says a mature Christian is familiar with the word of righteousness understanding that they are righteous makes a mature Christian. They don't look at the, the issue in their life. They repent of it. They turn away from it and deny its access by saying, you're the Lord, you deal with this, not me. It's dealt with on the cross. I'm free from this leprosy. I don't need to worry about it. I'm not going to get it from anybody else. I can't be contaminated any longer because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world I hold the power of God the presence of God the transforming life of God we must remind ourselves renew our mind daily if necessary to the truth and when we learn to walk in the truth then we are able to see the benefits and the, um, the fruit of that truth manifested not just in your own lives but in saving others in this world as well by going out and transforming them. It says here in Hebrews 10, 16, This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws upon their heart. So now you've got the things of God on your heart. It's not leprous. And in their mind I will write them. And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Why are you remembering them? I will remember them no more. Now where there is forgiveness on these things, there no longer is any offering for sin. No longer have to do an offering for sin because forgiveness is there. Okay, Just got some dust. Deal with the dust. Just wash it off. Simple repentance. Not separating us. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus... It's not a blood covering that's got to be prayed on because it lifts off. When you've received the work of the cross, it's applied permanently to you. You have the blood of Jesus applied to your life, making you whole, cleansing you, giving you forgiveness, making you righteous. That gift of righteousness is a gift. What do you do with a gift? What do you do to get a gift? Receive it. It's all you have to do. Receiving is believing. Sometimes it's just we've forgotten to believe that this is the truth. And we've believed a lie and then that lie festers and produces more lies and we look at that and we continue. It's a bit like um, you know, the, uh, the problems that we can have in our life where we look at those things and we think that is who we are. You know, so years ago I told you I used to think I was an angry bitch. And I would look at myself and think, that's who I am. So what did I produce? 
anger and acting like a bitch. And all I did was reproduce what I was looking at. As a man beholds it, so he is. As he thinks it, so he is. But to transform myself, I had to start to say, this is not my truth. This is not my reality. That's not who I am. I'm ashamed of that. And so it's sin trying to get hold of me. But instead, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord. You're not just my forgiver, like my Christ that took my place, but you're my Lord. I choose you to be ruler and master over this anger and over the issues that are causing this anger. And he took that away. I couldn't. It was his grace and mercy. He takes it away. And so by his blood, I can come confidently. I can come confidently. So can you. Therefore, brethren, that's you. Since we have confidence to enter the holy place, the presence of God, by the blood of Jesus, in a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, See, his flesh, he took it all on. In his flesh, he took on the death and the decay as such. But it didn't decay him, not one cell. It tried, but not one cell because he's triumphant. He wore the crown of victory. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Assurance. Having our hearts sprinkled clean, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Jesus, you have done a complete work, a work that just amazes us. It is so hard to comprehend sometimes when we look in the natural, we see things that we don't like and we think that they have the control and the power of our lives. But today, we repent of that. We choose to set our mind on who you are, your character of love, your character of forgiveness, your power and authority to deliver us, to set us free, to transform us. I thank you that you are willing, that you don't want to just speak a word to us today, you want to touch us right now. Spirit of God, Touch each heart as it opens to you. Spirit of God, be manifest the truth to them, the truth that they are righteous, that they are holy, they are acceptable, not because of what they can do, but because of who you are and your willingness to transform, your willingness to accept, your willingness to set them on fire.